Hi everyone, my name is Dong Jae Kim and welcome to my presentation. Today I'll be presenting my research work called Studying Test Annotation Maintenance in the Wild. This work is done by me in the first picture with the help from three other professors, Dr. Santales, Dr. Chen, and Dr. Yang. We are a research group from Concordia University in Canada. Software becomes increasingly complex over time. With the amount of growing user demands, developers need to continuously implement new features over time. Therefore, software testing plays a vital role in verifying software quality. The goal of testing is to fix defects early to reduce later costs and at the same time, to continue to deliver high quality products to keep the customers happy. Unfortunately, even tests are prone to design issues. These design issues are called test mills. The presence of test mills may negatively impact program comprehension and maintainability. Ever since the introduction of test mills, many works have been proposed to improve test quality and test case design. However, most proposed works are limited to general test design and test assertions. Since the introduction of Java 5, annotation has influenced the way developers write code, including the test code. For example, there is an increasing usage of test-specific annotations that come from frameworks like JUnit and TestNG, while smaller amounts are from other annotations that are not specific to test code, like Java Lang. And these test annotations are a critical aspect of test design. One example of test annotation is called timeout. As indicated in yellow, test annotations can be configured using a key called timeout with a numeric value. This means that the test should finish within the configured time and failure to do so within the given time would result in the failing of the test. Another example of test annotation is related to test fixture. As indicated in yellow, a test method can be annotated using either before or before class. Before class indicates that the test method should only run once per class and before indicates that the test method should always run before executing each test cases. Test fixture and timeouts are only some of the examples of annotations used in the test code. And despite their importance, there is a limited empirical evidence on the prevalence and maintenance of annotation in the test code. So there's a need to study test annotation maintenance in the wild. Additionally, studying test annotation will provide actionable insights for three groups of audiences. For researchers, it will open a new direction to study misuses and test smells related to test annotations. For application developers, studying annotation uses in real project settings will help better educate developers on how to use test annotations. For framework designers, studying annotation uses in real project settings will help them understand the limitations of the framework as well as the need of the application developers. Therefore, we propose two research questions to study test annotation maintenance in the wild. In the first research question, we look at how test annotations are changed in the wild. In the second research question, we look at why do developers change test annotations. To carry out a research, one of the authors extended the recent version of refactoring minor to detect four new additional types of annotation changes. These changes are method, field, parameters, and class level annotations. And for each annotation, we detect changes like add, remove, and modify annotations at the commit level. And our tool can achieve 99.7 precision and 98.7 recall. And we use our tool to study on 12 open source Java projects. Our first research question studies how annotations are changed in the wild. To answer this question, we compare the annotation changes with traditional refactoring at the same program elements. We find that test annotation changes are comparable to regular traditional refactoring. In particular, annotation changes are more common at the method and class level. We additionally study annotation replacement at different program elements. We find that annotations are frequently replaced across versions or other framework. For across different frameworks, testNG to JUnit is a common annotation replacement pattern. Another one is JUnit to Spring Boot. 
For cross-version changes, JUnit 4 to JUnit 5 is a common annotation replacement pattern to be uncovered. Therefore, RRQ1 shows that annotations are prevalent and frequently changed in the study systems. Therefore, future studies on test maintenance and refactoring should consider test annotations. Our second research question studies why annotations are changed in the wild. To answer this, we look at two examples. As introduced before, one is test timeout and the other one is test fixture. We only discussed two examples, but there are many more interesting annotation changes covering our paper. First, we look at how timeouts are used in test. Here we look at some expected usages of test timeout and other interesting ways timeouts are used. The expected use of timeout is already encouraged by the design of the annotation. It is to ensure that the test finishes on time for detecting performance regressions. Upon finer analysis, we find that test timeout is in fact helpful for detecting deadlock. In each space, developers use timeout in order to detect potential deadlocks that can happen when the test code hangs for more than a specified time. In another case, we find that timeouts can also complement potential errors associated with resource retrieval. In Hadoop, the test code failed from no pointer exception and it is difficult to pinpoint the precise reason for test failure. Therefore, a developer encourages adding the timeout to help debug that the test has hung due to failure to retrieve resources. Despite benefit of using timeout, we find that developers need to constantly increase the timeout. In Hadoop, developer asked to increase the timeout of the slow test. However, there is no discussion about why tests became slow in the first place, and the developer proposes increasing the timeout as a solution. Similarly, in Hive, developer discusses as if increasing timeout as a solution to fixing the slow test. In a more extreme case, developers remove the timeout entirely to avoid test failure. In Hadoop, during a bug fixing activity, developers remove the test timeout entirely. Therefore, in the usage of timeout, we believe developers need better support and education about the capabilities of the testing frameworks and avoid ad hoc annotation usages. Next, we look at how annotations are used to maintain text fixtures. Here we look at some expected usages of test fixtures and other interesting ways test fixtures are used. In the fixture maintenance, we find that before class is commonly replaced by before in the fixture test code. This is done to ensure that the new fixture is set up before each test case in order to isolate the test fixture and avoid undesirable side effects. Similarly, we find the reverse where at before is replaced with before class. This is done to improve the test execution time by executing the fixture only once per class as opposed to once per every test cases. More interestingly, we find cases where developers introduce before annotations to remove duplicate fixtures in the test code. However, we find that configuring fixtures can be inflexible in the framework for example, before class is only capable of running once per class, while before is only capable of running repeatedly for each test case. Therefore, there's no way to selectively configure unique fixtures for individual test case or even set fixture for certain test cases. The negative impact of this limitation is shown here. Developers need to introduce a parameterized helper method to selectively configure the fixture. By doing this, developers also introduce a duplicate test code, which makes the test code more verbose. Therefore, in the usage of fixture, we believe that framework designers need to provide better flexibility in their APIs. To summarize, in this work, we studied how test annotations are maintained in the wild. To answer this, we have developed a tool to mine annotation refactoring in four different program elements. We studied how developers use such two examples of annotations to maintain the test code. Finally, we provided actionable insights for three groups of audiences. 
Thank you for listening. Thank you. Hi, everybody. Um, if you've just joined us, this is the session on API development. My name is Carolyn Seaman, and I'm from UMBC in Baltimore in the US. And I have Dong Jay with me, who is ready to answer your questions. Um, so please, uh, if you have a question for Dong Jay, please write it in the chat. Um, we have a few minutes here, and I will get us started with a question that I'm curious about. Um, I wonder, Dong Jay, if you could tell us a, a little more about how you studied the annotation changes in the studied systems to, to, to kind of extract the reasons. Did you do it qualitatively, and, and did you look at all of the changes or just a sample? Um, how many were in your sample? How'd you choose the sample? Um, the, just a little bit more about your analysis process in that part. Uh, right. Uh, so for the manual study, uh, I, I did it qualitatively. And for that one, we took a statistical sample. But then because a lot of projects have like different portion of annotation, so we took like a stratified sampling to account for a different proportion of like the numbers, annotation changes per project. And from there, uh, I did, we, we kind of like uh, separated the, we, we took the manual samples and uh, two authors like uh, looked at the samples individually and then we just got together after we kind of discussed it until a consensus was reached and we used the i forgot what the the scoring was um we use uh, this like metrics to measure the the level of agreement okay. and then we reached a sub, uh, i guess substantial level of agreement and mm -hmm. yeah so that that process of discussing of coming to consensus did that change your um I guess sort of your coding scheme or your your set of uh, set of reasons uh, that you the, the buckets that you put them in. Did you change that structure at all as through the process of consensus, or did yeah. that stay yeah. stable through the whole analysis? Um, and it, it the main idea stayed like uh, similar, but it just the way we wanted to present it kind of like changed after. We keep like iteratively looking at it, discussing, and then our kind of like uh, the the big picture has changed over time. But then, no, sorry, not the big picture state. But then, like the way we wanted to like communicate it, like uh, changed. So, like your descriptions and definitions of the different reasons. Yeah, those... to, to make it more like concise. Um, so, Nat has a question in the chat. She asks, um, "How many samples?" Uh, have you manually checked in total? So we so, checked 375 samples in total. Okay. Yeah, and that's taking, uh, we took a statistical sample, at like uh, 95 confidence uh, and 5% interval, confidence interval, and then uh, we took a 365, I think it was around 665 sample, and yeah. Any other questions from the audience? I'll give you just a few more seconds to type them up, if you would. Um, and just a reminder, at the end of the Q&A session, there will be a discussion room to pop up if you want to talk to Jung, Jung Jay some more. So now has another question. If a researcher would like to build a refactoring tool or a bug fixing tool for test annotation improvement, what patterns can they refer to in your paper? So they can look at uh, my, uh, J unit migration. Um, they could also use uh, look at timeout. We, we we show different ways timeouts are used for uh, various purposes, and you can also look at a fixture. And I'm I'm not. And the additional experiments I want to do is maybe how fixtures may affect uh, like the performance of the test. But then, but, but some of the examples we found are more related to uh, removing. Uh, is more for like maintenance of the test code, like removing duplicates and refactoring like uh, duplicate code, some of them. And then they could parameter a test is actually one of the a more challenging, but could be interesting uh, refactoring to study because uh, you can use parameterized tests to like reorganize your the, the code architecture. And also in terms of a uh, JUnit migration, I think there's a uh, huge potentials for migrating between like different versions of JUnit, like for expected ex exception. Because from my study, I see, I see that there's like so many various ways to use expected exception. It could be like try and fail, like uh, there's like various ways you can refer to the paper. And those are like some examples. And I'm sure that 
there are we looked at main like JUnit and TestNG, and I'm sure that there could be more like interesting annotation uh, usages if you look at uh, annotations, like custom annotations. Because uh, in the paper, we only looked at JUnit and TestNG. Maybe some custom annotations could have been used with uh, JUnit, but I think that could also be uh, interesting to study. All right, thank you. All right, any more questions? Um, if not, I'll end the Q&A session, but uh, don't go too far uh, if you want to go into the discussion room with Dong Jay, uh, which will pop up in a little more than four minutes. All right. Thank you very much, Dong Jay, uh, for you. your presentation you. and for your answers. Um, I will go ahead and leave the room. Um, you can leave the room and, and come back for the discussion room if you want, or you can just turn off your camera and mic and wait for the discussion room to pop up. Okay. All right. Thank you, everybody.